Yo, what is going on, A Push Peeps? We have a good one for you today. This one is on Herbert Spencer and the survival of the fittest. I will be covering everything you need to know regarding this subject for the AP exam. Shout out to Mr. Pacconi's class at San Marino High School. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. We have a good one for y'all today. This topic is important as it pertains to key concept 6.3.2. This key concept states that dramatic social changes in the period inspired political debates over citizenship, corruption, and the proper relationship between business and government. This period of time was from 1865 to 1898. Firstly, you will need to know who Herbert Spencer is and what he did. He was an English philosopher born in 1820 who made various connections between his economic theories and Charles Darwin's biological and evolutionary ones. Spencer was initially inspired by Darwin's On the Origin of Species and is considered the most influential philosopher regarding the application of Darwin's ideas in social evolution. Spencer adopted the phrase survival of the fittest as a way for describing the mechanism of natural selection, which most of you probably remember from a biology class in the past. The idea of survival of the fittest stems from another idea, which is that the strong individuals in a species with desirable traits or phenotypes will outlive and reproduce more often than those lacking such traits. This leads to future generations that resemble advantageous individuals. To Spencer, this was the law of life. A common example of this phenomena is the evolution of finch beaks in relation to their geographical location in the Galapagos Islands. Finches with beaks that best fitted their needs for survival in a certain region were able to survive long enough to mate and pass along their advantageous traits. Those who followed Spencer's social beliefs were known as social Darwinists. Social Darwinists believed that the strong will survive and the weak will subsequently perish over time due to their inability to compete. Because Spencer believed that this change is best for the evolution of civilization and for utopian society, he would strongly oppose any attempts by the government to stop this from happening. As long as the competition does not infringe on the equal rights of competitors, anything is fair game to Spencer. In fact, Spencer believed that the government should only have two roles. One is to defend the, the nation against invasion and to protect its citizens, and the other is to protect the property of its citizens from the likes of criminals. Thus, Spencer and his followers strongly opposed the involvement of government in the business world. In the minds of radical social Darwinists, in order to be successful at anything in life, it is quint quintessential that one is ruthless and vigorous, like a tiger killing for food. To them, it is simply the way of nature. Spencer expanded his theory by applying it to what the highest society valued, that being capitalism and social power. In the late 1800s, many Americans were enthusiastic about Spencer's ideologies as it encouraged laissez-faire capitalism, meaning that economies and businesses function with no interference from the government. The leaders of the capitalistic world, the Rockefellers and Carnegies, took hold of this idea and used it for their own personal good by expanding and dominating their competition. Ultimately, the influence of social Darwinism infected many Americans and birthed a more competitive and cutthroat culture in society during this time period. Okay, so quick recap. Know the background of Herbert Spencer and how he came to coin the term survival of the fittest. Also know what was the inspiration behind his philosophies and what effect did his philosophies have on capitalism and other economic policies during the time period of 1865 to 1898. Alright guys, looking forward to see you back here for my next video. Thanks for watching and as always, best of luck on, on the AP exam in May and have a good rest of your day.